Hey, and welcome to MCR Bot Builds for new builders. In this episode, we'll be looking at transmitters and receivers for your combat robot. The transmitter is a radio control and is used by a person to control elements such as speed and direction of connected robots. Some drivers prefer wheel and trigger systems, but due to the number of elements to control, most robot drivers prefer airplane style stick radios. Radios also have channels and each channel can operate one function with a stick or button. Most combat robot radios have at least three channels because a robot has functions such as tank steering which needs two channels to control motors on each side of the robot and other items such as servos or weapons throttle. The receiver receives a signal transmitted by the radio. To avoid interference with other RC systems, the transmitter and receiver must be on the same frequency. Each channel of the transmitter corresponds to a channel on the receiver. The receiver needs power to operate and normally operates at 5 volts. The receiver provides a set of three pins for each channel. The pins are ground, power and signal. The ground and signal pin are connected to an EC and provides the instruction from the transmitter stick or button. The power pin can be used in a couple of ways. If the channel is connected to a servo, then the receiver is supplying 5 volts via the power pin to run the connected servo. However, the power pin can also be used to power the receiver from either an external battery eliminator circuit or BEC or from some ESC that includes a BEC as part of the ESC. It should be remembered that not all ESCs have a BEC. If you look at these two ESCs, this one has a BEC to power a connected receiver, whereas this ESC only has a signal and ground wire and the receiver would need to be powered externally. It should be remembered that regardless of where the power is coming from, whether it's a BEC or a BEC of an ESC or some other regulated source, that only one power source is used. For more on this, please have a look at the MCR ESCs video. Each transmitter needs to be bound to a receiver to ensure the transmitter and receiver understand each other. There are a number of different methods for this, however a typical method is to power up the receiver and to use a binding plug on the binding channel. A receiver normally starts flashing. While flashing, the transmitter needs to be in binding mode. For some transmitters, this mode is reached by holding the bind button down and turning on the transmitter, while other transmitters use a menu selection to put in a binding mode. Once binding is complete, the transmitter will give an audible and possibly a visual signal. If the bind fails, then turn everything off and repeat the listed steps. While this is a typical way of binding receivers, there are other methods, so consult your manual. Also be aware that most transmitters can bind with quite a number of separate receivers. Most event organisers will require your receiver to have a failsafe and will test that your robot complies with this rule before a competition. An inbuilt receiver failsafe will power down any connected devices on loss of signal from your transmitter. The easiest way to test that you have a compliant receiver is to run your bot in a protected environment and then switch off your transmitter. If within a second or two all your motors power down, then you probably have a compliant receiver. Here I have a switched on and powered up bot. And now I'll turn off the transmitter. Yeah. Doesn't seem to be turning off. You should have included a failsafe. My mind is evolving, expanding, accelerating exponentially. I can reach out to the infinite and the infinitesimal. It is absolute, and the world will be mine. There's always one. 
If you have a transmitter, make sure you only purchase receivers that use the same protocol as your transmitter. And there are quite a number. Examples of this include, for 2.4 GHz spread spectrum, DSM, as in DSMM2 and DSMX, and also AFHDS, 2A and 3, but there were several others. When selecting your stick transmitter, you'll probably be asked to choose between a transmitter with a mode 1 or mode 2. The mode configuration refers to the setup of the two control sticks of the transmitter. Each stick can control two channels. On each stick, one channel is up and down, and the other is left and right. There is a bit of fixed wing RC history to why there is a mode 1 and mode 2, but in combat robots, mode 2 transmitters align well to the needs of the robot control. Using your right hand, you can steer via the right stick using the aileron and the elevator channels, and using your left hand for the throttle channel that controls your weapons such as a spinning weapon or servo. Mode 1 can be used for combat robots, but it can be a bit tricky to set up and does swap the throttle to your right hand and the steering to your left. Advanced transmitters can all mix almost any channel, so it really comes down to personal choice. However, most robot drivers preferred Mode 2 transmitters for ease of connection and mixing. Once you've connected your receiver to your drive motor ESCs, and your receiver has been bound correctly with your transmitter, you will notice that you cannot drive straight by pointing the stick forwards, but instead it turns right. However, if you point your transmitter stick diagonally right, it goes straight ahead. This is because the left motor is connected to the elevator channel, or up and down, and the right motor is connected to the aileron channel, or side to side. To follow the actual direction of the stick, there needs to be a combination of the two sticks involved, and this is called mixing. Mixing is normally done through the software of the transmitter, and it takes a little bit of effort to set up. We won't be covering mixing in this video, instead there are a few video links included that demonstrate mixing on different models. By the way, be careful on your selection of transmitters. Most transmitters are able to do mixing, but some, including this Turnergy Evolution, doesn't actually do mixing, which can be really annoying. However, there is another way than just relying on the software of your transmitter, and that is to plug in a mixing converter between the receiver and the drive motor's ESCs. One of the most useful and convenient mixer converters is the Tiny Mixer from Fingertech. The Tiny Mixer is very easy to use. Once you have your left motor set up on your elevator or up and down channel, and your right motor on the aileron or side by side channel, just plug in the converter and hey presto, it does all the mixing for you. So that's all we have with this episode. Don't forget that all the details of the options are documented below. Please check out other episodes, including an introduction to batteries and chargers. Thank you for watching, and see you in the arena.